Hi, I am G.K. Raghavan, Chemistry Faculty from All Force Educational Institutions, inviting all for All Force Chemistry e-learning program. Today, I am discussing about uh, 11th Standard Chemistry, that is Intermediate First Year Chemistry. The chapter is Structure of Atom. Structure of atom. Structure of atom or it is also called atomic structure. It is also called atomic structure. It is also called atomic structure chapter. This is a beautiful, the first year fundamental chapter in chemistry. <coughs> Okay, that is in the 11th standard. So this, in this atomic structure, so it explains the concept of atoms. So, atom, the basic fundamental unit of all matter, it is atom. Yeah, what is mean by atom? It is very interesting point to note. So, the concept of atom <coughs> was first explained by John Dalton, scientist. Dalton explains the concept of atom. So, according to John Dalton, atom is the smallest unit of matter, the smallest unit of matter, the smallest fundamental unit of matter. So, according to the John Dalton definition for atom, atoms are the smallest particles, invisible particles the smallest invisible particles and indivisible and may or may not exist in the nature. Okay, So, that is called atom according to John Dalton. That is the definition of John Dalton is atom is the smallest invisible indivisible particle of matter which may or may not exist is known as atom. So, according to the modern concept or modern view, we can say atoms are indivisible. I do not think so because atoms we can divide. Not only atom, even we can divide the nucleus of the atom also. So, that is corrected in the recent times. Okay. <clears throat> so, according to John Dalton, atom is the smallest, uh, smallest unit of matter. That means the smallest unit. See, for example, this is the chalk piece. So, this chalk piece is broken into small pieces and small pieces. So, the smallest unit, the indivisible smallest unit, that means we cannot further divide into subparticle. That final unit is called, according to John Dalton, that was called atom. So, that is a definition according to John Dalton. No, that is atomic theory was first explained by John Dalton. That is John Dalton atomic theory. Okay. So, <coughs> According to John Dalton, atomic theory, the salient features of atomic theory are as atoms of an element, that is atoms of an element appears to be similar. That means atoms belongs to a particular element are identical. Atoms of an element are identical. Atoms of different elements are different. Atoms of a single element is identical. Identical means what? They are identical in physical and chemical properties. Atoms of different elements are different in their properties. Okay. So, every atom, every atom has the unique property such as atomic number and mass number. Okay. Atoms of different elements will have different atomic numbers and mass numbers. Okay. <clears throat> These are the characteristics of atom and <clears throat> every atom possessing the characteristic atomic number and its mass number. The drawback of this Dalton's theory is he could not explain atoms are having isotopes because atoms, atoms of the same element having the same atomic number but different mass numbers that was not explained by John Dalton. Okay. <clears throat> then in this Dalton's theory, 
So now we are discussing about the structure of atom. What is mean by the structure of atom? So it explains the fundamental that is the, <coughs> the systematic arrangement of the systematic arrangement of all subatomic particles in the atom. What is mean by what are subatomic particles? The subatomic particles such as subatomic particles subatomic particles of atom are like one is electrons electrons number two protons number three neutrons these are subatomic particles atomic structure the basic fundamental definition is the systematic arrangement of various subatomic particles in the atom is known as atomic structure the systematic arrangement of electrons how the electrons are arranged and how the protons are arranged and how the neutrons are arranged so these experiments are <coughs> put forth by the different scientists so that is electrons was was discovered by jj thompson and he explained so the that is cathode rays and cathode rays are later they named as electrons and goldstein discovered protons and neutrons are discovered by chadwick so different scientists they contributed their work in the discovery of various fundamental particles and the systematic arrangement of these particles <coughs> that is electrons are revolving around the nucleus okay good idea stop yes so the development of various atomic models to understand the chemistry of atomic structure chapter is like for example dalton's atom dalton's atom this dalton's atom when it was in the experimental observations of various scientists like jj thompson jj thompson he discovered electrons and goldstein experiment goldstein experiment he explained protons and chadwick experiment explains discovery of neutrons so where the atom is consisting of protons neutrons and the electrons all these fundamental particles are present in atom so then after this it leads to the rutherford's atomic model rutherford atomic model that is rutherford that is gold foil experiment rutherford gold foil experiment this leads to the discovery of nucleus discovery of nucleus this leads to the discovery of nucleus according to this let us indicate like this so the nucleus is consisting of protons and neutrons in the nucleus then the negatively charged electrons are revolving around the nucleus electrons are revolving around the nucleus in spiral motion okay right this is this leads to the discovery of nucleus and protons then the next one is bohr's classical mechanics bohr's classical mechanics bohr's classical mechanics this leads to the discovery of orbit discovery of orbit then so according to bohr so the atomic model can be understand the nucleus at the center of the nucleus we have the nucleus containing protons and neutrons then various electrons are revolving in closed circular orbits that means this experiments leads to the discovery of orbits that is discovery of orbits discovery of orbit 
okay then after this we have Sommerfeld's arrangement Sommerfeld concept Sommerfeld concept explains Sommerfeld explains existence of this nucleus it is protons and neutrons it explains existing of that is a discovery of suborbits suborbits suborbit is nothing but subshells suborbits then the quantum mechanical model quantum mechanical model quantum mechanical this leads to the discovery of orbit we have orbit suborbit suborbit and orbital where the electrons are present this is the general description of atomic model according to the different scientists and their experiments and to understand the brief atomic structure models including all atomic models okay this is the introduction part of atomic structure okay and as we as earlier i described that atom is invisible the invisible smallest unit particle that is atoms are <coughs> the smallest indivisible particle of a matter which may may or may not exist okay may or may not exist means atoms are maybe they are stable or maybe they are unstable see generally how we can say that atoms are stable see for example the noble gases like helium neon argon krypton xenon and radon these noble gas atoms are stable atoms that is why we can say atoms may exist and the other atoms which are very reactive therefore we can say that they are not exist so atoms the smallest invisible indivisible particle which may or may not exist okay so that is introduction to the atomic structure next discovery of electrons discovery of electrons discovery of electrons electron discovery of electron how we can describe an electron electron generally can be described like this unit negatively charged subatomic particle unit negatively charged subatomic particle which revolves around the nucleus in fixed orbits is known as electron we can describe like that the common definition for electrons once again that is unit negatively charged subatomic particle revolving around the nucleus in closed circular in closed orbits that is electron that is a basic definition of electrons okay now electrons first cathode rays cathode rays the experiment was done by that is cathode rays that is <coughs> plucker plucker and crookes plucker and crookes scientist they conducted a discharged tube experiment that is plucker and crookes they conducted a discharged tube experiment at normal ordinary pressure okay at ordinary pressure they did not observe any change in the discharged tube on passing 10000 volts current on passing 10000 volts current and they did this experiment at ordinary pressures that is at normal pressures so plucker and crookes this they conducted discharged tube experiment at ordinary pressures that is at normal pressures on passing 10000 volts current so initially they did not observe any change in the discharged tube 
so the pressure in the gas is reduced to 10 to the power minus 2 2 10 to the power minus 3 millimeters of mercury when pressure is reduced to this much then they identified a glow on cathode okay the same experiment was repeated with repeated by jj thompson scientist jj thompson they repeated the same experiment that is called jj thompson discharge tube experiment jj thompson discharge tube experiment and he observed the glow of light which was formed on the surface of cathode this light is moving from cathode to anode at very low pressure under very low pressure on passing same amount of current that is 10,000 volts current. So, <clears throat> the rays are moving from cathode to anode. So, since the rays are produced at cathode, they are called cathode rays. Okay, this cathode rays, that is the discovery of cathode rays. The cathode rays experimentally discovered by J.J. Thompson, but initially the experiment was carried out by Plucker and Krupp's scientist. This is about the discovery of cathode rays. Okay, next, the property of cathode rays. What are the properties, basic properties of cathode rays? Number one, we can say like cathode rays which are produced at cathode, therefore they are called cathode rays in the discharge tube. Okay, secondly, <clears throat> these cathode rays are moving from cathode to anode in straight lines. The rays are moving from cathode to anode in straight lines because when a metal that is a fixed a orbit is placed in middle of the in the path of the rays, so the shadow of the object falls on the opposite side that indicates that the rays are travels in straight lines. Okay, and the next property we can identify that this cathode rays has momentum and energy because a frictionless pedal wheel is placed in the path of the cathode rays. So, due to this, when cathode rays are moving, that is when they are when the wheel is present in the path of the cathode rays, so these rays hitting the, the wheel surfaces, so therefore the wheel continuously moving. So, the moment of this continue, the moment of this frictionless pedal wheel indicating that the cathode rays has momentum and energy. Okay, and when cathode rays are passing through the magnetic field, the rays are deflected towards south pole, and the ray when the rays are passing through the electric the electric field, they are deflected towards the positive electrode that is positive pole that is anode. So, therefore, this experiment indicates that the cathode rays has a negative charge. Okay, this is a discovery of electrons. Yes, once again the discovery of cathode rays with the discharged tube experiment. A discharged tube is a horizontal cylindrical glass tube containing two metal plates acts as anode and cathodes and they are connected to the induction coil that is energy source. So, hydrogen gas is filled in the discharge tube under very low pressure that is 10 to the power minus 2, 2, 10 to the power minus 3 millimeters of mercury pressure under very low pressure on passing 10,000 volts current. So, the electric that is the light glow is observed on cathode and some rays are moving from anode to cathode. They are moving from anode to cathode. Okay, this is discharged tube experiment according to J.J. Thompson. Okay, so the rays are moving from cathode to sorry cathode to anode. Okay. The rays are produced at cathode, they are moving towards anode, so therefore they are called cathode rays because they are generated at cathode, they are called cathode rays and when a mechanical wheel is placed, when a mechanical wheel is placed in the middle of the, that is in the path of the cathode rays, in the path of cathode rays. It revolves continuously because the cathode particle when it hits 
the surface of the fan so it moves goes down so the frictionless pedal mechanical wheel revolves continuously that indicates that the cathode rays has momentum and energy okay that is another property of cathode rays and when an object is placed in the path of the cathode rays in the path of the cathode rays when a small object is placed in the path of the cathode rays so now the shadow of this object falls on the opposite side falls on opposite side indicating that so this cathode rays travels in straight lines okay so next when cathode rays are passing through the magnetic field the cathode rays are deflecting towards south pole they are deflecting towards the south pole say it is magnetic field north pole and south pole so now these cathode rays are deflected towards south pole that is in the magnetic field and when they are passing through the electric field these rays are deflected towards that is positive pole that is anode so therefore that indicates that the cathode rays has negative charge that is unit negative charge yes next discovery of protons the nature of protons in the nucleus or we can say the nature of the protons in the nucleus was first predicted by rutherford scientist and experimentally discovered by goldstein experimentally protons discovered by goldstein scientist and the existence of protons in the nucleus was predicted by rutherford okay so now the discovery of protons <coughs> protons discovered in discharge tube by goldstein in the discharge tube <coughs> a perforated metal plate is used as perforated metal plate is used as the electrode and these rays the positive rays are passing through the perforated metal cathode okay therefore they are called cathode rays the rays are produced at the rays are produced at anode they are passing through the perforated metal cathode okay so the protons are generally represented as ionized h plus ions they are ionized h plus ions the protons are ionized h plus ions passing through the perforated metal cathode okay <clears throat> they are called protons okay